everyone, today I'm going to be telling you about all the books that I read during March and April. I only read one book during March so I didn't do a wrap up for that and instead I've just put it in with my April one as there wouldn't really be any point in just doing a one book sort of wrap up. But I did read quite a lot in April so I have quite a lot to show you now. The first book I read was Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling and this is obviously the third book in the Harry Potter series. I don't really need to tell you what this is about, I'm pretty sure we all know. But I really enjoyed revisiting this story. I loved reading about Lupin. I find Lupin such an interesting character and I also adore Sirius. I have sort of recently found this new love for Sirius Black. I've always loved Sirius but it's just a little bit more intense now for some reason. I really, really adore Sirius Black. I love the time travel during this book but I did notice that in the film, the time travel is quite apparent throughout the story, whereas in the book, most of the time travel is done in the last couple of chapters in the book, and I didn't realise that. I obviously would have realised it when I first read it, but that was years and years ago. But I didn't realise it's literally all in, like, sort of the last chunk of the book. It's like this bit of the book, and that's it, and I'm like, oh! <gasps> Wow! I didn't actually realise that! And I was reading the book, as I was reading the book, I was like, when is the time travel going to happen? When is it going to happen? Because I was thinking, is this book just completely different to the film? It's not, it's just it all happens a lot at the end. I did also find a lot of differences, like other differences, between the film and the book as well. Whereas in the first two, I thought they were pretty similar. But both really worked. I love how the book makes it work and I love how the film makes it work. It really, in general, works really well together. Overall, I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. Now, don't kill me, it's just because this is actually my least favourite book in the series. Now, I know this is a lot of people's favourite book in the series, but for me, it's just not, and I don't know why. However, obviously, it's Harry Potter, and I adore Harry Potter, but I just can't quite give this one a 5 stars, and it's really annoying, but yeah. It's just, just how it is. The next book I read was Happy Mum, Happy Baby by Giovanna Fletcher. And I adored this book. This is a very sort of true in-depth discussion of Giovanna's pregnancies with Buzz and Buddy, her two sons. And it goes through her pregnancy and her labour and bringing the kids up. And it is just so raw and real. And she doesn't try to sugarcoat anything. It's just really true. She discusses a huge range of areas during this. For instance, obviously the pregnancy, the labour, she talks about breastfeeding, she talks about nightmare, nighttime routines with the kids. And she also discusses something that I don't think is discussed about enough, and that is the healing process after giving birth. Now, pregnancies are always talked about, the labour is always talked about, but the actual after bit is never really talked about, so it's really interesting reading that. But she didn't just say about sort of the physical healing process, she talked about how her mentality would change as well and how she dealt with that. I also found it really interesting when she talked about the comments she got on a certain photo she posted on Instagram and over other social media, I'm assuming. And this was of her post-pregnancy body. And the amount of hate comments she got on it was just heartbreaking. And I'm like, she's been through something that is life-changing. And she's brought a new human into the world. She's been through a hell of a lot and you're going to slate her because she's got a slight tummy on her from giving birth to a child. <clears throat> it really infuriates me but the way she dealt with it was really good and although it did really get to her at times, she eventually got used to it and it made her a much more stronger person and it made her love her post-pregnancy body a lot more because it doesn't matter. She she still looked amazing, can I just say. She looked fabulous in my eyes. And to be honest, if I look anything like her, if I ever give birth, then I'm happy. I mean, I'm not going to, clearly, but I can hope. I also find myself laughing during this book as well, though, because there was a chapter, especially the one I'm thinking about anyway, the chapter is called, Oh My God, My Child Is So Unreasonable. And it was basically about how she coped with... Buzz's tantrums and Buddy's tantrums and things and how each of them were very different with the way they reacted to things and this just made me laugh so much because she is so funny when she's talking about all of this but she also does make it really apparent that although she had her techniques as to how to calm a situation down 
This will not work for everyone. Every single child is different, therefore there is not one technique that is going to work for everyone. And she makes that really, really plain when she is writing her book. Like I said at the beginning of talking about this one, she doesn't try to sugarcoat anything. Everything's really real and that's what I really loved about it the most. Because at some point she was saying, is this TMI, as in like too much information? But I think it's really good for this topic to be talked about in detail because it's something that loads and loads and loads of people go through and loads of people need support when they're going through it as well. So the fact she was so real during her story, I absolutely loved it and I think it was really good the way she wrote it because a lot of books now are talking about pregnancy and things and bringing up a child, they're like, oh, there's perfect techniques of doing things and a perfect parent. There's no such thing. There is no such thing. I'm not a parent myself. But I can quite honestly say that parenting is clearly not easy. Although it's an amazing journey, it's also complete madness. So, <laughs> these books that say there's a perfect parent and there's perfect techniques to do things, no there's not. Anyway, I completely love this book, like you know, so I had to give it 5 out of 5 stars. Giovanna's done so well in writing this, and I would definitely recommend it. The next book I read was a book I started, but then I finished off during the Dewey's 24-hour readathon, and that was The Stuff of Nightmares by Mallory Blackman. This is about a boy called Kyle, who goes on a school trip on a train, but the train ends up crashing, and this leads Kyle into being able to go into people's minds while they're unconscious. He can see their nightmares, their fears. And this, this kind of makes Kyle realise that he's not alone, even though he has fears and they may not be the same as other people's, he isn't alone in having fears. I can't really explain it very well, it's a really difficult one to explain, you've just got to kind of read it, but it is really gripping, it's a really good page turner and I just wanted to find out what was going on all the time. I love the sentence during the nightmares because we got to find out a lot more about these characters and they, even though they're side characters, we did get to find out more about them during their nightmares, even though we didn't get to find out about much about them during like the main bulk of the story. I also really loved how this story was laid out. So we had like Kyle's chapter, and then the nightmare, and then Kyle's chapter, and then another nightmare, and so on and so on. I really liked that because it was easy to follow. I never found like I was getting lost at any point. I really wasn't sure about the ending though, and I talked about this a bit in my wrap up for the readathon. I just didn't feel like it ended right. I think I I wanted it to end a different way. Obviously, I don't want to tell you what that is. But I just found it a bit abrupt. And I wanted it to sort of discuss more things and, well, just end in a different way because I don't particularly like the way it ended. And I also didn't feel like I got attached to any of the characters either, which really broke my heart because I love getting attached to characters. But I did find that the build-ups during this book were really, really good. I really enjoyed them. And like I said, it was a page turner. It was gripping. So I give it four out of five stars because I did really enjoy it. The next book I read was Five Go Gluten Free by Enid Blyton. And this is about the famous five who decide that they're going to go and try a gluten-free diet because Anna's got a book for her birthday that discusses and tells you about all these gluten-free recipes and things and she wants to give it a go so the other five are kind of not made by Anne but kind of sort of made by Anne to give it a go it's really funny and for me really relatable because I'm gluten-free although they decide to be gluten-free I'm medically gluten-free I don't have a choice in the matter of research I'm not allergic I'm just intolerant so I don't hospitalize myself or anything like that if I do have gluten I just get a bit of salt on me. But it was really funny reading about how they coped or didn't cope as the case may be with this diet and how they kind of snuck food into their diet that did contain gluten but they didn't tell each other about it. I thought that was really really funny because that is something I do. Yeah, it's not good. I love the friendship between the five because you could really see how they supported each other and although they annoyed each other they really are good friends and they really do support each other through everything they do. And it was great to read Enid Blyton's adult writing as well because although I have read a lot of Enid Blyton writing before, it was when I was a child. I read her children's books and I did actually see some of her children's fiction writing during this, just sort of sneaking every now and again, which I really loved because it sort of brought my childhood back. But her adult writing is fantastic as well. I would have loved to have read more about Timmy the dog because he did seem more of a side character in this book and in, his, in the children's books he seemed more of a main character. So that was a bit different but it was fine and I still did really enjoy it and I give it a 4 out of 5 stars because it was really funny and really relatable. The next book I read was Kelp by Linda Aronson and this wasn't one of my favourite reads, <laughs> put it that way. 
This is about a girl called Emily who lives on an island with her family and they have a seaweed business. She is not interested in the seaweed business at all. She wants a more glamorous life. She is not interested in what they do. And she just kind of wants to get away from the island. Now, although I found this easy to follow, I did not think much happened. There was not much of a story. And I wanted to sort of find out more and more to happen. And I was waiting for more to happen. But it just didn't happen. <laughs> I was like, why is nothing happening? And I just felt like the story dragged and it was repeating itself and I was getting bored because nothing was happening and it wasn't sort of progressing into anything. And although I found Emily's character quite funny and she was quite a funny character to read about, I also found her so annoying. Like, she was swooning over her second cousin who was still married and also much older than her. <sighs> I just didn't find the story very believable, but like I said in my wrap up of the readathon, I do think this is a book of its time, and I think if I read it back when it was published, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. And I did read it a lot of years ago, and I think I remember actually enjoying it then. So maybe I did, and maybe it is just a book of its time that is great when you read it when it's published, but time goes on, and after time, it has just worn out, I think. It's not as enjoyable anymore. So I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars anyway, I just got bored. And the final book I read you in April was The BFG by Roald Dahl and I started this in the readathon but didn't get it finished but then I finished it afterwards so it was all fine. And I'm sure we all know what the BFG is about. It's about the big friendly giant who lives on giant country and he lives with all of the other giants and the other giants are actually horrible, they're not like him. They go out and eat people and the BFG instead goes out during the night and and delivers dreams to children to make them sort of sleep better, which I think is really, really sweet. But one night he goes out and a little girl called Sophie is sitting on the windowsill and sees him. So because obviously she's probably then going to go tell people like, oh my god, I seen a giant last night and it's all going to go a bit crazy, he takes her to giant country instead. And there she learns about the BFG and the other giants and what he's like and what they do. And she wants to change how they are and stop them from eating people. I don't want to tell you about a plan, but it is hilarious and it involves the Queen and it's so funny. And if you've not read the BFG, please read it. It's brilliant. It's Roald Dahl for a start off and I mean, he's just amazing. I just love Roald Dahl's writing and the imagination throughout this story was fantastic. I loved it so much. And the words he creates for the giants are just so funny. And even though they speak dif differently, they don't like they don't speak so differently that you can't understand what they're saying you do still know what they're saying and the bfg basically speaks like this because he's had no education at all so he gets his words and sentences all mixed up and it's just really funny to read about because the way he talks kind of brings this vulnerability to him but he's just so sweet and you just fall in love with his character i loved sophie because she is such a strong-minded little girl and she's got such a big heart and she just wants to do what's right for the world and she wants to get rid of all the bad people and I just think it's so sweet the way her sort of character develops and the friendship she has with the BFG is such a beautiful development I love that and the way sort of they support each other is just so lovely I just adored all of that about the story Roald Dahl is brilliant at bringing humour to his writing, but although he can do that, he can also completely flip it and bring these really heartwarming and beautiful moments as well during his writing. So it's nice to sort of see that balance and that mix of different writing styles because he is just amazing at it and I definitely recommend his writing if that's something you look for in a book. I also want to mention the illustrations actually because Quentin Blake is one of my favourite illustrators, I absolutely adore him and he's really good at sort of bringing a story to life and his illustrations make the stories feel a little bit more interactive and like you're actually in the story with the characters, you're going along with their story with them sort of thing if you see what I mean and it's just really really descriptive and now although his, his images are like they're quite basic, I'll see if I can find a good one um, let me have a look. What's a good one to show you? Like this one here of the BFG like catching the dreams, I just think is so lovely. It kind of brings this magic to the story, like you really do see the magic rather than just read about it. It's those kind of little elements. I just think the illustrations are perfect. I give this book four out of five stars anyway. I adore the BFG. It's not one of my favourite Roald Dahl books though, believe it or not, but I do really, really enjoy it still. 
So that is it for my March and April wrap up. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've read lots of amazing books during those months. If you've enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All of my social media links are in the description below as always for you to check out if you'd like to. And I will see you in my next video very very soon. Bye!